My name is Yosuke Todo. I'd like to talk about SSTU falsification attack on WPAT keep by modifying any packet to QoS packet. Now, I'll explain some background information. Security protocols for the wireless LAN network have been proposed. For example, WEP, WPA, and WPA2. There are protocols pro provide confidentiality and integrity to the wireless LAN network. But, WEP was broken by their key recovering attack. Their attack can recover a secret key from encrypted packets easily. Author of their attacks recommended shifting to WPA or WPA2 from WEP. In 2008, Beck and Tails proposed a new attack against WPAT keep. We call this attack the Beck Tails attack. Next, Ohigashi and Mori proposed the Man in the Middle attack against WPAT keep. We call this attack the Ohigashi Mori attack. Now, we propose two new falsification attacks against WPAT keep. First, I remark on an execution time of the Beck Tails attack and the Ohigashi Mori attack. Their attacks have an execution time of 12 to 15 minutes to recover a Mickey. But is, is the attacker really necessary to execute the attack for 12 to 15 minutes? This answer is no, because our attack can execute the falsification attack for 7 to 9 minutes. Next, I remark on the target of the Beck Tails attack and the Ohigashi Mori attack. The best test attack works for only a network that supports .11e. The Ohigash Mori attack works against other products that do not support .11e. But this attack is necessary to interrupt the communication between the access point and the client. It is not easy to execute this attack in a realistic environment. So I propose new attack. Our attack can execute against almost all implementations. I'll explain the method to avoid the falsification attack for WPA TKIP. First, TKIP IV check. Second, check some check. Third, mix check. If attackers want to execute the falsification attack, they, they have to break these three checks. First, I explain the TKIP IV check and the breaking method. WPA TKIP has a TSC counter that increases every time the receiver receives the encryption packet. If the received IV is less than or equal to the TSC counter, the received encryption packet is discarded. We pass this check by using the vulnerability in the processing of the .11e function. In the later, we will explain this breaking method and we call this method the QS forgery attack. Second, we explain the checksum check. Checksum check is a check for detecting errors on communication channels. This attack is implemented on Web2. We pass this check by using this feature of stream cipher. In the result, we will explain this break method and we call this method the reverse stop chop attack. Finally, we, I explain the mix check. MIC check is a check for protecting message integrity. MIC is calculated by using a message integrity check function Michael. We pass this check by using the reverse inverse function on Michael. Our breaking method is similar to the backstage attack. I'll explain the backstage attack. This attack is a method based on the replay attack. Main target of this attack is a null packet. This attack works for only a network that supports .11e. And this attack uses the chop chop attack that attacks against web. This attack can recover the plain text information by using the chop chop attack and falsify the encryption packet on WPA. First, I explain a um, null packet. A packet is a short packet and the fragmentation does not occur. Moreover, almost bytes of plain text can be known. Beck and Tails assume that only 40 bytes of a packet is unknown. The least significant byte of source and destination IP address, 8 bytes MIC, and 4 bytes checksum. Next, 
I'll explain the dot eleven EQS features. Dot eleven EQS features uses four access categories, and each category has a TST counter independently. The attacker can execute the replay attack to the category that the TST counter is smaller than the IV of the captured packet. Finally, I'll explain the chop chop attack for the vectors attack. Step one. The attacker captures an encrypted packet based on dot eleven EQS features. Step two, the attackers create the falsification packet. If the attackers know the least significant byte, they can list the CRC chops of the least significant byte. And the attackers calculate CRC that chops of some possible value of the least significant byte. Step three, the attackers send 256 falsification packets to the target client. At this time, the attacker chose another access category. If the predictive value is the wrong value, the error message is not sent. But if the predictive value is the correct value, the receiver sends the error message of MIC. Then the attacker can determine the correct plain text value by observing the error message or MIC. However, the MIC is changed if more than two error messages or MIC are sent in less than a minute. Then, the best that attack requires a standby time of a minute after a byte is restored. Now, we propose a new attack, the reverse chop chop attack. This attack restarts the key stream from the higher byte of the packet sequentially. I explain the effect of the reverse chop chop attack. First, this attack can recover MIC key for 7 to 9 minutes. Second, this attack can restore the IP address before restoring CRC and MIC. I call this effect the information gathering attack. Third, this attack can falsify a variable length packet. Then, I'll explain the reason why our attack is high-speed MIC-key recovering attack. If the attacker uses the chop-chop attack, they have to recover the checksum. On the other hand, if the attackers use our attack, they don't have to recover the checksum, because they can calculate the checksum from other bytes. As a result, they can reduce the execution time for about 4 minutes. Moreover, they can recover the IP address beforehand. As a result, they can reduce the execution time for about 2 minutes, total about 6 minutes. Next, we propose the QoS forgery attack for breaking tiki for every check. Vector's attack works for only a network that supports .11e. However, our attack can attack almost all implementations. Our attack uses the vulnerability of implementation in the processing of the .11e function by the client. Many wireless LAN implementations have this vulnerability and are prone to be attacked. The target of this attack is the client that has the vulnerability. In Vector's attack, the condition of access point and the, con and the condition of client is QS enabled. On the other hand, in our attack, the condition of access point is known, and the condition of client is dot level in function by the chipset. I'll explain the outline of the QS forgery attack. In Vector's attack, the attacker cannot attack this network that does not support QS because falsified packet is prevented by the TK5 check. But in our attack, the attacker can attack the target by modifying from the user packet that does not support QS to the QS packet. I'll explain the experiment result. First, we disable the dot eleven in function of the access point. Second, we experiment with three types of client USB type, cardboard type, and chipset with build in PC type. We evaluate our attack in an environment in which the vector attack cannot be executed. This table is the experiment result. We realize that several stations are potential targets. Moreover, 
We could attack many implementations assumed not to have dot eleven infusions. On the other hand, we could not attack this station because this station had been released before the standardization of dot eleven e. In addition, we could not attack this station because the communication is interrupted by one MIC failure report. However, this implementation is a breach of protocol. All implementations that we can possibly attack have dot eleven e features by the chipset. I explained the preventing the proposed attack. We strongly recommended the shift to WPAS or WPA2AS. And proposed attack can attack against TKIP. So attackers can also simula similarly attack WPA2 TKIP. Next, we recommend reducing the key update interval. But this method cannot prevent the information gathering attack. Finally, we recommend a specific client utility. It may be possible to prevent the proposed attack. Whether the attack can, pre can be prevented is also influenced by compatibility with the access point. Then, we cannot rely on the method for preventing an attack. Finally, I conclude this attack. We propose two new, two new attacks, the reverse chop chop attack and the QoS forgery attack. The reverse chop chop attack can recover a Mickey in from 7 to 9 minutes. The QoS forgery attack can attack almost all wireless LAN implementations. The attacker can execute the DOS attack by the realistic environment. Thank you.